Okay. Hello, everyone. So we are going to start our review for pharma, uh, for MedCert 2, and we will talk about immunology first. So in order to initiate the inflammatory response, you need to remember that there's many cells that are going to participate on that. The main and the first, uh, the beginning of all this chain of uh, of, of um, chemical um, process or cellular reaction are going to be the basophils, basophils. And this is a very common uh, since you have any allergies, allergens, you have any, a, a foreign body can actually produce this reaction. So first of all, we have the basophils. And what is the antibodies who are going to be released are going to be the immunoglobulin E. Remember, immunoglobulin E is uh, is going to increase when you have allergic reactions, parasite infections. Sometimes they are going to appear in some uh, uh, neoplasias. I want you to review about uh, lupus. Uh, lupus is an autoimmune disorder that is going to basically affect the kidneys. Uh, it's going to affect other parts of the body. And the first thing you're going to notice, there's there is four types of different lupus. Uh, the first the first thing you're going to see is the uh, the butterfly sign. The butterfly butterfly sign is the rush that is going to happen at the level of the uh, cheeks and the nose, right? Okay, so uh, patients who are immune suppressed, always you need to have a, a very a strict aseptic technique. Patients who will have HIV, patients who have AIDS, patients who will have some immune disorders, always you need to always, when you have some procedure, you need to use aseptic technique. Uh, patients who are going to use chemotherapy, people who are uh, patients who are doing uh, who are going to do chemotherapy, uh, just remember that there is two things that you need to remember. One thing is to keep how is the situation of the kidney, because chemotherapy have um, these substances they need to be flushed out from the from the kidneys. Uh, and that is going to improve just giving more fluids to the patient. Uh, in addition to that, uh, you know, you remember that radiation and chemotherapy can affect the uh, internal organs of the body. It's going to help to destroy uh, cancer cells, but at the same time can produce some damage in other organs, for example, the liver. And the liver is going to be damaged. So what you need to look is your LFTs, LFTs. And uh, if the liver is going to be damaged, it's a possibility, high possibility that the, the patient start to uh, not produce enough albumin as before, and that produce an increase of um, a risk for edemas, especially ascites. So when you have chemotherapy, you always need to check for the abdominal girt or, uh, to see if there is some uh, distension caused by ascites. Uh, nursing considerations for all the pathologies that we are going, we talk about in the in, in that lecture. One, for example, we need to talk about lupus. Lupus. What is one of the main uh, considerations is to uh, the sunscreen, right? Sunscreen that is going to be about uh, is recommended nowadays uh, uh, 50 uh, more than 50 uh, units. So this is uh, protection of sun. This is the unit that you use for that. And the, um, don't go out of the, don't go exposed to the sun uh, before uh, between 10 to 3 p.m. Okay, so we have, we need to know about the levels of uh, a, a, when we are going to have host precautions. So host precautions means that the patient is going to be more susceptible to have uh, a, a, a potentially a, a contact with bacteria coming from outside, right? From visitors, for example. So you need to have contact precautions. And what does it mean, contact precautions? We have, uh, for example, when is going to that happen? You, you know that the levels of white cells are going to be between 5,000 to 10,000. And that is going to be very important to uh, 
to do these cost precautions when the white cells are going to be below 5,000. 5, For this, I want you to remember too what is the difference between leukopenia and neutropenia. Leukopenia is the general white cells going down, and neutropenia is just the, um, the neutrophils are going down. I want you to remember to and review, please, all uh, examples of uh, hypersensitivity. Hypersensitivity, type 1, type 2, type 3, and type 4. So type 1, type 2, type 3, and type 4 is what we call A, B, C, and D. Type 1 is A, type 2 is B, type 3 is C, type, type 4 is D. Just to remember, and type out. A, type 1, A means allergy. Type 2, B means, means blood transfusions. Type 3 means complex. So those are uh, the antigen, antibody uh, uh, reaction. And number 4 is D, that is coming from delay reaction, delay reaction. Okay, so uh, for this, in addition, you need to remember what is the passive, uh, passive, uh, immunity and what is uh, active immunity. Passive immunity is uh, oh, oh, is going to be the antibodies coming from outside of, of the host that are giving by, uh, are going to be given to the patient. So the patient is cannot uh, have first time contact with the disease and the patient do not have all the immune defenses appropriately uh, prepared for, for this for this situation. So uh, the, the, all the troops and all the army in, the, in your body in the first contact is going to take about two weeks in order to organize and be uh, prepared, uh, I mean, and start to uh, fight against the bacteria uh, and full power. And what happened is meantime, you cannot wait two weeks for that. So you need to inoculate antibodies from outside the host and give it to the patient. You remember that these antibodies can be given from um, inoculation of the disease in some animal like cow or horse or can be in a laboratory and waiting until uh, the, the, this animal has the disease and waiting at the same time to produce antibodies. So these antibodies then are going to be uh, filtered and um, they're going to pro give it to the, to the patient. These antibodies have the <clears throat> has the inconvenience that they're going to last only two weeks, but these two weeks is enough in order to wait until the patient starts to produce his own antibodies that is happened to in two weeks. Okay, so <clears throat> here we have another thing that you need to re uh, check is the patient when they enter into um, into uh, some CT scan, MRI, or angiogram. Uh, it's obviously that the patient is going to receive some contra substance, and for that you need to check if the patient is allergic. Not all, not all for fish, for other iodine, but for exactly the medication. Just yes? check if the patient was having a CT scan before, uh, and what what is the contra substance that they was using in the past. We can have galenium, we have thorium, we have a different type of. Uh, of substances that like a patient can produce reaction. Uh, I want just to remember too about the uh, plasmapheresis. Plasmapheresis is when the patient uh, uh, um, are, are going to receive receive like a plasma from uh, from the outside of the from. Is going to receive plasma. Plasmapheresis is going to make the patient become hemolytic, hemolytic, sorry, hemodynamic and stable. That means that this hemodynamic and instability is going to produce the diminishing of the cardiac output. A consequence, they're going to lead into orthostatic hypotension, orthostatic hypotension. Okay, so talking about the immune system and the lymphatic system, you need to remember that the lymphatic system is going to carry lymphatic fluid. Meantime, the spleen is going to filter blood against the, uh, to filter microorganisms. Uh, the transplantation that is going to be a reaction part of the 
uh, immune reaction against the foreign bodies, like, uh, for example, the transplant of the kidney or anything, is going to be uh, two types, no? the autologous, the autologous and the allogenic. Allogenic is the most common because that is the one who is coming from um, another uh, individual of the same species. Uh, and uh, auto autologous, it means that uh, these stem cells are coming from his own body. So that is about what I want to, uh, it's a brief review, it's uh, not a comprehensive one, but actually it's going to give you a general idea of what uh, I want you to remember um, uh, for this lecture. Uh, talking about HIV, in HIV, you need to uh, remember that uh, this lecture actually is being, or this webinar is already, I make a, a PowerPoint, and this is in the form of webinar that is being posted in the in Moodle and in YouTube. So you can go either way in, and see this PowerPoint that I made it for uh, on Sunday. Okay, so for that we need to remember first of all the, in, the uh, definitions. You already know what is the difference between HIV and AIDS. Uh, what type of virus is the uh, the uh, HIV virus? What can trigger out the what can trigger out the uh, multiplication of the of the HIV? So you know HIV we have first stage that is going to last about four to eight weeks. Then we have the um, latent state that is going to last between uh, up to 10 to 12 years. And what happened that, that that stage can be diminished in time. Why? Because the patient starts to have other viruses like herpes, uh, CMB, cytomegalovirus, that is going to accelerate the, uh, accelerate the um, multiplication of the HIV virus and that latent period of 10 to 12 years can be shorter. Uh, all right, so the most, com uh, the most common is going to be in African American population. We have that especially is going to be the most commonly with uh, transmission man to man, man to man, and uh, uh, the most common uh, habit is actually have anal sex okay uh, even if you if the person is going to use condoms the, the there is a high risk high, is high risk overall to have this a um, uh, uh, passing uh, is going to just uh, pass the, the virus okay so uh, the difference between we need to remember that the values of um, let me see the values the values of the CD4, CD4 is going to be 600 to 1,200 cells per microliter. And uh, this is giving you, that is the normal range, but if the patient is going to have uh, less than 500 cells per microliter, that is start to increase very, very, very high risk for infections. Now, when they CD4 or T helper reach less than 200, and there is a, approximately approximately 10% of the loss of the body weight in about two months, that is telling you that the patient are entering into the stage transition from HIV to AIDS. To AIDS, initial stage, as you remember, is going to be between four to eight, uh, four to eight weeks. Okay, so patient education is very important because the patient doesn't know if they uh, doesn't know what is going on with his body when he's infected with HIV. You have the diagnosis of HIV, and the patient said, "Okay, so I can do whatever I want because I don't have any signs and symptoms." So uh, you, as a nurse, you need to orient and um, educate the patient, telling that even though that he's not having signs and symptoms, that the HIV virus is still in his body, especially they are not going to be in the bloodstream for about three months. Three months, that is the window, right? After you have the infection, you have a window, and this window is about three months, and it can, it can be up to a year that the, the uh, HIV tests are going to result negative. 
So you need to tell the patient that the HIV virus is not in his blood, but is is going to be is, is already still living in his lymphatic nodes, for example. All right. So talking about the the I wish I could make it like hundred questions about HIV. HIV is so interesting. So, but we are going to just uh, high, high yield uh, what is uh, actually important or relevant at this moment, the minimum that we need to know. So we have, uh, one thing is the uh, microsporidiasis. What is the microsporidiasis? Okay, the microsporidiasis is going to produce diarrhea. Uh, and what is the main concern you, as, as intervention for this patient is diarrhea and loss of fluids, start to dehyd be dehydrated, electrolyte imbalance. So at least you need to request the patient to take water about three liters, three liters per day. And uh, yes, uh, uh, habits like wash fruits and um, fresh food all the time. Uh, I want to talk about the, the adherence of the medication of HIV. You know, the medication is going to be Stabudin, uh, the Nadocin, and the other one is the um, ACT, ACT, that are actually producing uh, side effects that we already talk in pharmacology, so we are not going to repeat that now. So be careful from the signs and symptoms of the infection itself and differentiate from the signs and symptoms of the side effects of the, of the drugs. Okay, uh, we need to talk about uh, toxoplasmosis. Where is toxoplasmosis? Toxoplasmosis is a, 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 a process that is going to be transmitted by cats, by cats, right? So what you need to do as uh, interventions is to prevent the patient to be close to the leader or clean the leader of the of the of the of the cat. So that is uh, one of the recommendations that you need to tell the patient. Uh, we have the uh, multifocal leukoencephalopathy, where the leuk is, in, I put it at the end, because this is a part of the yes, latest stage of HIV. So you are going to have, besides and more than LOC, you're going to have uh, uh, mental status, you need to evaluate the mental status. How do you evaluate the mental status? First of all, what is the PML? Is the degeneration of the white matter. The white matter is going to be degenerating from the central nervous system, and the patient starts to lose his cognitive uh, level. So that means that the patient starts to lose memory, the patient are going to uh, uh, be uh, is going to have impaired concentration and especially uh, psychomotor slowing can they can lead to into incontinence so the patient starts to lose control of his uh, 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 physiological uh, needs okay so we have the aspergillosis let's talk about the aspergillus Aspergillosis. The aspergillosis is a fungus. Okay. And please, I want you to be sure and you need to remember that uh, what, when you are talking about complications and uh, infections, you need to know which one is a fungus, which one is a virus, which one is a bacteria. So this is a must. Okay. Uh, we have. Um, Aspergillosis, what you need to remember is to, uh, we need to prevent uh, the pouring soil, so the, the pots with, with uh, plants, that is going to actually be the presence of this aspergillosis. This, aspergill this aspergillosis is uh, one of the drugs that we're going to use, is the caspal fungin. And what is going to happen with this aspergillosis is they can produce a sinusitis. 
very important, paranasal infections, paranasal infections, and they can result in uh, presentations as crisis of asthma, crisis of asthma. Uh, patients who has um, a hair leukoplechia, the hair leukoplechia, so that are the one of the latest stages of the, um, where is that? Leukoplechia, there you are. Heri leukoplechia is one uh, of the presentations of AIDS that are going to be in, uh, in end stage disease of the patient. Okay, uh, we have, uh, first of all, what is, some nursing considerations here that basically the Heri leukoplechia, you see here these uh, lines like a uh, look like a hair, right? So those are uh, EP, EBP, the Epstein-Barr virus is EB, it's not P. EB as in boy, B, the Epstein-Barr Epstein 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 virus. That is a type of herpes virus that is located especially on the surface, uh, lateral surface of the tongue and inferior or under the tongue. It, most of the time it's associating addition to um, to what candida albicans that mostly happen on the top of the tongue. So what you need to do here is this patient is going to have some uh, cracks on the on the tongue that can produce some pain. So what we need to do is to not to mobilize the the the, the tongue during the meals and uh, during the drinks. So the patient is going to use a straw in order to min minimize that pain. All right, so we have um, the sarcoma caposi. Where is sarcoma caposi? Okay, sarcoma caposi. Car sarcoma caposi, what you're going to see are the lesions, the lesions of the, of the, on the skin. These lesions on the skin, are going to be purple bluish that is mostly distributed in the upper and lower extremities sometimes in the chest and what happened with sarcoma caposi is that when you see this bluish look like a mold and that is abnormal because if you pass your finger they have some relief if you try to get rid and cut that uh, that a uh, lesion it's going to bleed the blood is going to be very dark. It's not like a, a red, the reddish. It's very black. And this patient uh, have another problem. Sarcoma caposi is a disease of the connective tissue. And this uh, sarcoma caposi, uh, what is going to happen is to damage internal organs of the body too. So what you need to remember about this is that when you see these lesions, you need to look for uh, abdominal pain abdominal pain. So that means that most likely the, uh, the sarcoma caposi is invading internal organs. So, so to make a diagnostic, uh, uh, to make a diagnostic of, uh, of uh, HIV, you need to know that we have ELISA-1. If the ELISA-1 is positive, you need to have ELISA-2, that is positive, if that is positive, to confirm the ELISA-1. And a, at the end, you're going to have the defini definitive diagnosis with the Western blood, Western blood. Okay, so for this, we are going to talk about the cytomegalovirus. Cytomegalovirus is going to be a, one of the latest two um, complications of the, in the patient. Cytomegalovirus is a, the most common infection in patients with AIDS. Okay, especially at the end stage. What is going to happen is the blur vision, blur vision or loss of the vision. Why? Because the cytomegalovirus produces inflammation of the retina. So when you see on the right side is the fundoscopy, a fundoscopy of the, of the retina and produce inflammatory process, even detachment of the, of the of retina, of the retina. All right, so we have uh, the definitions. We have ART, A-R-T versus H-A-A-R-T. So what does that mean? We have that is highly active retroviral therapy. 
and we need to be very careful and the exam is going to focus very much in patient education and your interventions and they are going to uh, you need to for example uh, promote the adherence of the medication to prevent resistance to the uh, medication okay all right so uh, we need to remember what are diseases what type of diseases are the autoimmune diseases autoimmune diseases give me some examples autoimmune disease will be for example multiple uh, sclerosis my uh, we have myasthenia gravis we have lupus we have arthritis we have uh, or some psoriasis uh, uh, all right so about just to finish this uh, review we are going to talk about the hiv in in newborn so there is many mechanisms that can actually pass the hiv to the to the patient very and there's a big difference between a mother who having treatment and who with the mother who has no treatment basically the baby can get infected in 24 percent of the cases if the mother is not 24 percent of the cases if the mother is not receiving any treatment but they can decrease between one to three or four percent the risk if the mother receives treatment okay Okay, so and here over 50 years old HIV, uh, the signs are overlooked in these patients because uh, uh, those are uh, going to resemble the signs and symptoms of aging process. And sometimes it's overlooked the, the signs and symptoms of HIV. Uh, and because uh, in addition, the physician is less likely is going to ask about the sex activities to a patient who is over 50 years old or they use some uh, of a different type of drugs okay so that is about what i want to talk very brief because i know that everybody want to study and rest uh, me too i guess so i want to thank you everyone for all your so your your attendance we have eight students okay so i want to thank you each of them each of you uh, shamonda uh, neil jessica thank you jessica uh Hodan, fanny Adeline, and aj uh, if there is any other questions or there is no questions please let me know if we're going to stop the recording at this moment so you can